Um, I'm glad to have this opportunity to share with you. I'm from Dr. Dentistry's group, and my name is Tan Tian. Today, I'm going to introduce a method which can improve the first cycle efficiency of the silicon monoxide anode for lithium-ion batteries. So nowadays in our society, the power supply has gradually transformed from the traditional fossil fuels to the renewable energies. So the lithium-ion batteries have become one of the most popular energy storage technologies because it, um, it has higher energy density and it is simple to be accommodated. Uh, we can notice that the batteries are used in, in our smartphone, the laptops, and also the electric vehicles. So it is very important to find ways to improve the performance and lifespan of the batteries. Speaking of a typical lithium ion battery, it usually contains the lithium cobalt oxide as the cathode and the graphite as anode. In between of the two electrodes, there is a separator to prevent the internal short circuit and the whole cell is filled with the electrolyte for the ion conduction. During the charge process, the lithium ions will be moved from cathode to anode and these ions will then be moved back from anode to cathode during the discharge process. At the same time, the electrons will migrate through an external circuit. So uh, the first cycle efficiency of the anode, which is also called the first columnar efficiency, reflects the reversibility of these lithium ions, which can be uh, calculated by the ratio of the lithium ions extracted from the anode over the lithium ions inserted in the anode. Uh, right now, the traditional uh, graphite anode has a specific capacity of 350 milliampere per gram, which is very low and hinders the energy density of the batteries. So we want to uh, find other anode materials with higher specific capacity. In this case, the silicon monoxide has come to our eyesight. Um, it is thought that silicon monoxide has a random mixture structure with the silicon, silicon suboxide and silicon dioxide inside. And due to its special structure, the SIO is very easy to be thermally disproportionated as shown in this uh, XRD result that when the silicon monoxide is annealed above 900 degrees, we can observe the formation of crystalline silicon here. The silicon monoxide has a specific capacity of 1500 milliampere hour per gram, which is more than four times higher than the traditional graphite anode. So this is good to uh, improve the energy density. However, silicon monoxide has a challenge it has very low first column efficiency of only 50 to 70 percent due to the reaction of its oxygen in the material with the lithium during the first cycle. And uh, this reaction will form the lithium oxide and lithium silicates, which are usually thought to be irreversible or partially irreversible. So, the researchers try to use the pre lithiation method, which uh, provides additional lithium to compensate the lithium loss during the first cycle to improve the crystal efficiency. For example, to direct contact the anode with lithium metal or through the chemical pre lithiation with the assistance of lithium contained solvent or the electrochemical pre lithiation which is to precycle the target anode and then extract it for uh, further application. However, these uh, methods are hard to, uh, for a large scale commercialization because they need rigorous conditions. For example, in the direct contact method, the lithium metal is highly reactive. So this procedure needs to be conducted under in the atmosphere, such as in the glove box or dry room. 
And for the electrochemical purification, they may need to disassemble the precycled cell to extract the anode and then reassemble it in a new cell. So these procedures are all time consuming and uh, not cost effective. So we try to find a new way to improve the first chromium efficiency of SiO by thermally annealing it with sodium carbonate. And uh, our master aims to suppress the reaction between the oxygen matrix in the SiO with the lithium rather than uh, provide additional lithium salt. So in order to uh, make sure of the reaction conditions of this pretreatment, we first try to evaluate the effect of different heating temperatures. We can see that the pristine SiO shows a amorphous XRD pattern at the very beginning. When the SiO is new with 5% sodium carbonate under these four different temperatures, we can observe the formation of crystalline silicon dioxide and uh, crystalline silicon. Uh, and in this first charge discharge profiles, the capacity of the samples decreases with the increasing temperature. And the sample with a new under 500, uh, 850 degree shows the highest first chromium efficiency. Then we evaluate the effect of different sodium carbonate amount. When we annul the samples under 850 degrees with the 2.5% sodium carbonate, it forms the crystalline silicon. As we increase the sodium carbonate amounts to above 500, then the peak attributed to crystalline silicon dioxide emerges. And in the first cycle profiles, the capacity decreases with the increasing amount of sodium carbonate. Still, the sample with 5% sodium carbonate gives the highest first chromium efficiency. So in order to understand the reason behind this improvement, these three samples were then chosen for further characterization. Notably, if we assume that all the SiO can be disproportionated into the crystalline silicon dioxide and silicon here, and all the silicon dioxide is inactive towards the lithium ions, then we can have a theoretical capacity of 960 million per hour per gram. And this value is close to the experimental data we have here. So we consider that silicon monoxide annealed with 5% sodium carbonate under 850 degree can, uh, is the best condition that we can get the highest first chromium efficiency. From the SEM images, the samples after the pretreatment show similar particle size with the bristling SIO of about one micrometer. And the EDX result illustrate that the sodium is distributed uniformly among the particles. The TEM and SAED results are inconsistent with the XRD results where we can observe the formation of SiO, SiO2, and the crystalline silicon. The crystalline parts are circled here in the high resolution TEM. The solid state NMR can give us more insights of what happened. That pre scene. SIO shows a broad peak here assigned to the amorphous silicon dioxide. Then with the 2.5% sodium carbonate addition, we can observe the crystalline silicon form. And uh, as we increase the amount of sodium carbonate, 
these two peaks become more distinctive, indicating the formation of more crystalline SR2 and SR. Then the XPS was conducted to unveil the role of sodium in the whole process. In the oxygen 1S spectrum, the pristine SIO shows the SIO, SI peak, and with the addition of sodium carbonate, we can observe a new peak assigned to SIO and A. And this peak become more intensive with larger amount of sodium carbonate and a higher temperature. And in the silicon 2P sector, we can see the combination of silicon at various oxidation states and with the addition of uh, sodium carbonates. This, uh, the silicon under the highest oxygen, uh, oxidation state uh, increases. And this can be explained by the polymerization reaction here, where the oxygen in the SiONA can react with the silicon and then form a polymerized species where the silicon in the species is at the highest oxidation state. Meanwhile, the sodium will be charged balanced with the free oxygen. So it illustrated that the uh, sodium participates in the whole reaction, facilitating the uh, disproportionation of SiO and reduce the uh, reactivity of oxygen towards the lithium. Uh, then this sample, because it has the highest current efficiency, it was then taken to do the long cycle uh, performance. In this half cell demonstration, we observe that the pre-treated cell shows similar cycle performance with the pristine one, where both samples delivers a, a capacity retention over 90% after 200 cycles. And this indicates that the pre-treatment can improve the first room efficiency of SIO without affecting its cyclability. And in this cross-sectional SCM images before and after cycling of the pre-treated electrode, mm -hmm. the volume extension is only about 90%, which is way lower than the theoretical volume changes of the SIO. And the electrode retains its integrity without obvious particle polarization or electrical delamination. In the full cell de demonstration, the pre-treated cell shows a first conveniency of 86%, which is 30% higher than the pristine one. And the cell shows no capacity fading after 100 cycles. The benefit of improved first conveniency efficiency in the in terms of energy density can be estimated by assuming a full cell with repeated cathodes and anode. The energy density can be calculated by this equation. This equation where the Q is the aerial capacity, B is the average voltage, and T is the thickness of the repeating unit. When we couple the silicon oxide anode with the NCA capsule with an error capacity of 3 mAh per cubic centimeter and an entropy ratio S1, the energy density is supposed to have a 15% improvement to about 900 watt hour per liter uh, compared to the commercial graphite anode. Um, the thermal stability was also studied uh, by the DSE. In this figure, we observed two exothermic peaks, mainly attributed to the reaction of electrolyte decomposition and reaction between the lithiated electrolyte and electrolyte. 
and the pre-treated sample shows last heat generation of about 1,300 joule per gram. So this indicating that the pre-treatment can also improve the thermal stability. So in summary, this method incorporating the sodium carbonate can improve the first column efficiency of silicon monoxide from 61% to 86%. Uh, this is because that the sodium can facilitate the formation of crystalline silicon and silicon dioxide, which deactivates the oxygen matrix in the material and reduces the irreversibility of the SiO during the first cycle. As a consequence, the thermal stability of the pre-treated electrode and the energy density are also improved. So uh, our method brings the new perspective to the battery field, which allows the utilization of SIO with um, improved energy density and a simple manufacturing uh, procedures. Um, Oh, at last, I want to give thanks to my professor and you and my group members. And uh, this is all I want to share with you today. Thank you for your attention.